Hey everyone, welcome to Daily Mix. I'm here today with Ruth Crilly from A Model Recommends. And we put out some questions on Twitter so that we could answer your beauty and makeup related questions. Right, well the first question is from Javeria and she asks, what is the best way to apply liquid foundation? A million different ways to apply it. You can apply it with your fingers, sponges, brushes, stiffing brushes, whatever method works best. I prefer with liquid foundations to use a beauty blender sponge, which is the pink egg shaped sponges. I've got one of those. Amazing. Dip them in water so that it's immersed. It will expand three times its size. Then you take it by its tip. You apply the foundation from the bottle or from your hand, wherever you've put it on, to the face and bounce it on the skin. And this bouncing motion disperses the foundation, therefore blending it all for you. You say Beauty Blender, that's an actual brand of yeah, that's sponge. The What's the difference between that and any other? There's a lot of generic versions of it out there or you know slight copies of it. They're really good too, but the softness that the Beauty Blender has is slightly different. It's much, it's much softer. It's easier to use. Okay. Whereas the kind of knockoffs or the repeats of it are much, much harder. And um, you know, if you can get the original, then go for it. Otherwise, try one of the, you know, duplicate brands. Perfect. Okay, let's go for another question. This is from Haley Townsend. Oh, this one's definitely one for you. Haley says, "What's the best way of learning to become a makeup artist?" Um, practice. I think the best thing to do is to practice on everybody you can get your hands on, but particularly practice on your mother and your grandmother, because if you can get makeup to look really, really good as we get older, then you'll be able to work on anybody. And I know that sounds strange, but our skin changes, the texture, all those kind of annoying things that happen as we get older, that by doing it on somebody older, you're getting used to different textures of skin and different movements. So if you can do it on your gran and make somebody say, make somebody who's a 60, 70 look great, then it's much easier to start working on the slightly younger models. You can go to school and course and learn it, but there is no real formal qualification, not really to be a makeup artist. It really does come down to practice. That's a really good point, and I've never heard anybody say that before, because everyone says, oh, you can go and train and you can go on model shoots, but actually, learning to do makeup on an older person that's more difficult, you're kind of throwing yourself in it deep end. If you can do that, you can do anything, can't you? Yeah, absolutely, because our skin texture and all that kind of stuff changes when we get older, and lots of annoying things happen, and it's not great, but when we can work with a medium that is slightly different, because anybody can make a 14, 15, 18 year old look great, but if you can make a 60 year old look amazing, then imagine what you can do when you're given, you know, that fresh kind of yeah. new skin. So just practice, that's really all it is. Get a good portfolio and go to a photographer and say that you will work for free in exchange for print. What a great tip. That's absolutely free and you can practice on your family. Absolutely. Coming from the top there. This one is from Zaina and she asks, how can I eliminate or conceal dry skin? Actually, that's, this is a difficult one because when you have that dry flaky skin, it's hard to conceal. She only gets it around her mouth and nowhere else on her face. There are so many kind of variables of why somebody might have dry skin. It could be, it could be the weather, it could be hormonal, it could be a million different things. Best thing to do is if your skin can tolerate it, to make sure that that area of the face is exfoliated well. And you don't have to buy lots of really expensive products. Um, plain baking soda, bicarbonate of soda, works great when mixed in with a cleanser because this will exfoliate the skin, but it's soft. It's not going to disrupt the skin's barrier or you know, anger it like some of the scrubs can do. And also a plain old fashioned washcloth dipped into warm water is one of the best exfoliators that you can get for your face. And they're incredibly cheap. And you can just put them in the washing machine clean again. What about you? I totally agree with you. I don't like those harsh, abrasive scrubs. And the apricot scrubs. Yeah, that had the, that with the kernels in. The glass. Yeah, no, they're bad. I mean, I use a chemical exfoliant, but I think you have, I mean, you have to be careful whatever the cause of the flaky skin is and the dryness. It could be some kind of sensitivity. But I think there are some great creams out now. There, there are some amazing ones that are for post peels. So people that have been for really kind of severe chemical peels and it helps the skin to kind of rejuvenate itself. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, 100%. And, I and think they're not that expensive. No, La Roche-Posay does a good one. Yeah, and um, Eucerin as well is a really good brand yeah. because they're so emollient that they trap the moisture in the skin, which is exactly where you want it to go. And I always think, especially with dry skin or damaged skin, make sure that the product is, if possible, fragrance free. This one's from Kitty Cat. Kitty Cat lives in India, which is really sunny and she needs help for a look that looks natural in harsh sunlight. I think I like mineral makeup because I think that it's excellent. It photographs relatively well for mineral makeup because they have a natural SPF in it. Sometimes SPFs can be 
troublesome. Mm. I don't find mineral makeup to be troublesome, and it just looks amazing on the skin. Even mature skin, as we get older, it just melts in, despite the fact that it's powder. I think it's the best thing ever. I think the other thing is that over the recent years, there's been this real trend for people piling on the illuminators along the cheekbones and under here. And mm. it is a really good look, but in harsh light, that just looks like snails have Absolutely. crawled their way I mean, along. The glowing skin look looks amazing in certain lights. It looks amazing in photographs sometimes. But in daylight, when you've got a lot of shimmer on your cheekbones or on your cheeks and a lot of shimmer on your eyes and then on your lips, and it then becomes too much that you need to strategically place the areas of your face that you want to look a little bit shiny and remember that you don't want your entire face to be shiny because in harsh light that will look mental. Time for you to answer one. This one is from Carrie L and she asks regarding the party look and thin eyebrows I've got lovely thick eyebrows and I've tried concealer but it shows through. Why do you want to conceal thick eyebrows? I love love thick dense eyebrows and they're totally coming back in aren't they you're seeing a real move away from that very thin groomed brow absolutely i think i think natural eyebrows or, or a more natural shape they look younger they're softer on the face because the very very thin eyebrows and, I, and i've said this a lot if you if you look at cartoons then the the wicked queen or whomever in the cartoon will always have very thin very angry looking eyebrows, very arched. Whereas, you know, the princess, they're much thicker, they're softer, there's no arch. And there's a reason for that because it's a strong look. But if you want to cover them, eyebrow wax. You can get it from most sort of specialty stores, costume stores, easy to put on. You just paste it over the brow, the brow becomes invisible and you put foundation over it and you have no brows. And you can then draw on any brow shape. I love the fact that you're watching movies and looking at their eyebrows <laughs> and what their, their eyebrows say about them. That's fantastic. I, I can't help it. And these cartoons. You never stop it's working, Wayne. I am I'm working as we speak. Janice has problems with her eyeliner, with the kind of panda eye look after she's been wearing it for loads of hours. The, the problem with coal liners when we, you know, when we do coal liner and suddenly it transfers, you have it on your lid and suddenly it's not, it's up on your crease or it's even worse, it's, you know, sort of, melted down. Waterproof gel eyeliners work really well for this because they're waterproof. A lot of them, once they're on, you know, they'll stay on. Mm. And that's one of the best things about them. Another way is waterproof, of course, coal pencils. A little bit more troublesome because, of course, the waterline is actually got water on it. So they don't really mix, but you can get them on there with a little bit of practice. You just need to keep going over and over the area. That will stop it. And make sure that when you're applying your mascara, as you go up through the lash, you don't touch the tips of the lash because then the mascara won't transfer, giving you that kind of panda eye. Can I say my personal favourite for the um, waterproof liners that literally don't come off for about three days are the Urban Decay, I think they're called 24-7. They do them in loads Pencils. of colours. Yeah, they're brilliant. They're very good, aren't That's they? what I use, yeah. yeah they're quite, I always think they're quite similar to the, the Makeup Forever version, the Aqua Eyes. Okay. Both are quite similar. Uh, the Urban Decay ones are amazing because yeah. of all the colour range. But they're affordable as well, I think. So. Yeah, you don't have to then, because if you want to do smoky eye, it doesn't have to be black. No. Purple, green, doesn't and matter. And I like the ones which Urban Decay and I think the Makeup Forever as well, where you've got a little bit of give, just as you put them on, you can smudge them out and then they, they set. Yeah, before yeah, they dry. They're incredible. And I think you've got slightly heavy lids as well. Make sure that your eye is looking down and allow it to then, once you've then blended it or smudged it or whatever you've done, allow it to give it at least that 30 seconds we have to do for it to set so that thing. you're not opening your eye and yeah exactly and it's suddenly yeah where you don't want it to be because i get that transfer up here yeah it's not great is it you no. don't want it there if you don't want it there so. no because it's not even on the crease it's above the crease so it's kind <laughs> of yeah exactly nice yeah thank you so much for all your questions don't forget to rate comment and subscribe to the daily mix channel and if you've got any more questions for us to answer next time, then get in touch at contact at dailymix.tv and we shall see you next time. Bye bye. Bye. Contour the cheekbone area right here. There we go. And I'm also going to contour the jawline <laughs> ever so slightly. I'm not even going to say it. There you go. Same thing on the other side. Just the areas here.